The Pelicans made a horrible decision after beating the Kings. They flew directly to Las Vegas for two plus days? Don't you know you have big man James Harden on your team? What were they thinking? So before the in-season tournament against the Lakers, Zion and Ingram were asked how they would celebrate a win. <laughs> Ah, Zion's laughing because he'd do some nasty stuff he can't repeat out loud. But did he do some celebrating anyway? Because five minutes into the Lakers beatdown, this is Zion jogging back on defense, sweating his butt off. His man is wide open. Like, why did you even put your hands up? Five minutes in, it looked worse because of how dominant 39-year-old LeBron was. Oh, but it's not just that. He scored 10 points against the Kings. And look at this, jogging back on defense, barely tries for that rebound. Awful D against Harrison Barnes. Darren Fox just easily sidesteps him and goes. What are we doing? Is this professional basketball? Zion has never made a playoff game, not even a play-in. And in the biggest game of his life, he brings this. So a nasty report leaked soon after. The Pelicans have repeatedly stressed to Williamson that his diet and conditioning need to improve. Williamson, multiple team sources say, doesn't listen. Ooh, team sources? Yeah, that quote only happens when the team is fed up. They have tried everything. They have babied him, covered for him in the media, letting him work out on his own away from the team. Now they are leaking to reporters, gloves off. If this doesn't wake Zion up, nothing will because we are headed to an ugly place. But first, today's video is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy, which I am playing every night. The end season tournament was awesome and it's just to have fun. My favorite game is called Pick'em. You pick higher or lower for your favorite players. You could up to 20X your money on a single night, but you will always have fun. I wanna give you my two picks for tonight. First up is Kobe White. I'm going higher with his points, rebounds, and assists. Dude's been on a heater without Zach Levine and the Bucks don't defend guards very well. Next up is Jalen Green, also on Monday. I'm going higher with his points against Sacramento who has a horrible defense. And remember, follow those picks at your own risk, but I guarantee you we will enjoy watching these games. Check out this map to see if Underdog is available in your area, but always use promo code AMHOOPS. It really helps out the channel and you can double your deposit up to 100 bucks. Promo code AMHOOPS, thanks to Underdog. It reminds you of Ben Simmons. He was rookie of the year, an all-star putting up big stats, but he wouldn't shoot. And everyone knew, hey, if this guy would just shoot, he'd be MVP. Videos every off season of him shooting threes. But during the season, everything went back. People are like, why doesn't he just do it? It makes no sense. And with Zion, it's like, why doesn't he just get in shape? I mean, like a cashier with two kids can get in shape, not a 22 year old millionaire. And every off season, oh, skinny Zion gonna take over the league. But every season, the same thing. At some point, these guys just are who they are. Ben's team gave up on him. Now he is a shell of himself scoring six points a night. Are we going to see the same thing with Zion? Shaq compared Zion to himself. He said, I was just like him until a teammate talks sense into me. But that's just wrong. Shaq must be forgetting like his entire career. He was super fit as a rookie, looked like Giannis, but apparently he didn't work hard. Then he learned how to be a professional in year two and made the finals year three. This is what Shaq is talking about. But what happened after that? He went to LA to be a Laker and for three years had early exits in the playoffs. Meanwhile, Shaq was focusing on everything but basketball. He starred in movies like Kazam and Steel in back-to-back -back years. He released two rap albums. Talk about living the LA lifestyle. But in 99, they hired Phil Jackson as head coach. So Phil called Shaq and said, hey, I noticed your schedule is pretty full this training camp. Why don't you cancel all of it? And Shaq was like, why would I do that? And Phil said, I promise if you focus this year, you'll win MVP. And if you don't, go back to being a celebrity. So Shaq listened, won MVP and his first title. So Shaq wants Zion to be like him. Except not actually, because after Shaq won, he got complacent again, started showing up fat, 
would play his way into shape. At the same time, Kobe was entering his prime, so he would carry the team to start the year. But halfway through, it was a problem because by the time Shaq was fit, Kobe didn't want to hand the team back to him. Kobe told the media, Shaq is fat and out of shape. If this is his team, then act like it. It caused such a big rift that Kobe and Shaq said, it's either me or him. So the Lakers broke up the dynasty. So Shaq didn't fix his problem and become a different person. But there is another reason Zion is not like Shaq. You notice every time Shaq got bored with basketball, he would focus on something else? Dude has a drive. He just can't shut off. Even after he retired, Shaq tours the world as a DJ or becomes a police officer. Who does that? That is what Zion is missing. It's a burning ambition to be the best. Zion doesn't have the killer mentality. He's basically the same player he was as a rookie. Like Zion doesn't play his way into shape. He like comes in fit, then gets fat. If anything, he's gotten worse this year. No, Zion is more like the biggest bust of all time. Not Anthony Bennett, but Jamarcus Russell of the NFL. Just like Zion, Jamarcus was dominant in high school. Undeniable talent, like Zion's viral dunks as a teenager. Jamarcus went to LSU with Nick Saban, and once he became the starter, it was amazing. His team barely lost a spot in the national championship, but he dominated Notre Dame at the Sugar Bowl. Zion was appointment TV at Duke. Both guys drafted number one overall, but then the problem started. Jamarcus held out of training camp with the Raiders for more money and eventually got 35 million guaranteed. He was great in his first game, but he had a couple of deaths in the family and was abusing codeine cough syrup. Eventually, his weight ballooned to 315 pounds and his work ethic was terrible. One time, a coach handed Jamarcus a DVD and said, I need you to study this game film. So the next day, the coach asked him, hey, did you watch it? And Jamarcus was like, yeah. But the coach had given him a blank DVD. That's when they knew they were screwed. So after just three seasons, Jamarcus was cut from his team and was arrested for drug possession a few months later. Now you might think that comparison is too much, but if you swap drug addiction for food and women, it's pretty close. The big difference though is New Orleans would never cut Zion, and if they did, someone else would snatch him up. But would they trade him? That nasty leak to the media looks like they're getting close. Maybe a change of scenery would be best. And if Zion is on the market, I think the number one team is the New York Knicks. Shams just reported, the Knicks are monitoring the marketplace. They wanna see if there's a star player they can go all in for. Is Donovan Mitchell that guy? Maybe, I mean, he's got more playoff success than Zion, definitely more focused. But Zion has the potential to be the best player in the league. How do you pass that up? Bill Simmons previously mentioned three players for the Knicks, Giannis, Embiid, or Donovan Mitchell. Since then, Giannis signed an extension to stay in Milwaukee. The Sixers dealt James Harden and are looking good. But what could they get for Zion? Forget the weight issue. We don't even know if he could be healthy a full season. The Pelicans have to hope a second team creates a bidding war. The Chicago Bulls could blow it up and see what happens. Maybe the Raptors would take a chance because they never get huge free agents. The Utah Jazz have the trade chips from dealing Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. But if Zion doesn't take this embarrassment personally, he could be the next Ben Simmons or Jamarcus Russell. The exact opposite right now is Tyrese Halliburton. No hype coming in, 11 teams passed on him draft night, but now he is proving everybody wrong. But why did all those teams say no in the draft? It is actually a crazy story and each and every pick could be a full documentary.